Hello, how are you? This is more or less a part two of a continuation on um, making certain elements in your painting. Um, for those of you who might be very familiar, I did a tutorial on this um, painting of clouds. All right. So essentially we're going to do um, a continuation on this painting I'm gonna do a set of mountains one's gonna be far off in the distance looking pretty much the same color as the background um, this light bluish color with a little bit of, of um, brown in it down below we have essentially the, the same three colors phthalo blue burnt sienna and titanium white all right and we're gonna get started right away on this. I'm using a three quarter inch flat brush. You can see it right here. All right. And I'm gonna take the bristles. I'm gonna put, dip the bristles in water, loosen up the bristles a little bit. All right. This brush has been through its many wars. So it's a little um, stiff toward the ferrule. Don't know where that is. That's the silver part there. All right, it's just long extended use and whatnot. All right. We're gonna mix a little bit of this phthalo blue. We're gonna put it right here. We're gonna get some titanium white because we're gonna lighten up that blue quite a bit. All right, and we're gonna gray it out with some of this burnt sienna. All right, because I really want these series of mountains in the background. We're gonna still maintain some of that blue, but we're gonna, we're gonna gray it a bit. All right, <clears throat> just like so. I'm gonna get a little bit of glycerin just to loosen up the paint okay a little bit i should technically make a little bit more than this but these mountains will be in the background all right this is going to be a preceding mountain that's going to be a little bit darker all right so it's going to make give it a sense of 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 airiness and like you're literally thousands of feet in the air all right i feel i should gray that out a little bit more brown it up just a little bit more. All right, and we'll start with this. Okay, <clears throat> this part will probably disturb a few people because <laughs> we put together some pretty decent clouds here. But I'm just going to take and make a nice interesting little hilly mountain is shape here. Just like this, make it a little craggy here. Just like that and bring it on down. Just like this. Make little peaks here. Mainly, I'm concerned mostly with the outside edge of this guy. All right, that's it, more or less. And this mountain is in the back ground, so I don't have to necessarily cover all this with that blue, but just enough to let you know that there is something hanging around back there. I'm just getting some more of the paint and just going to cover some of this stuff up here. That's all. All right, be safe, take care. Getting some more of the brown, getting some more of the blue. I'm gonna get a little bit of white to lighten that up a little bit. Okay, it might be a different shade and that's quite all right. It just adds to the texture of this piece. Getting a little glisten so I can loosen up this paint a little bit. That's all I'm doing. I'm not really changing anything. It's not that much glycerin. Okay, and I'm just, and it, glycerin does not change the uh, shade of, of, of whatever you, you have. That it does not do. All right, just wanna let you know that. But basically, like I said, I'm just adding. And you see, it's, it's similar to the background sky color. That just gives the impression of. Now I'm gonna get some titanium white here. I'm not taking the paint off the brush. Get a little little glycerin, stir it around a little bit. Get a little mist type of action going on down there. Just from down here, just like this. And crisscross strokes, bringing it up into the mountain. Just like that. I'm not really concerned really about covering all of it because it's going to be covered by a larger darker mountain all right 
getting more white get a little glycerin loosen that paint up a little bit this is the blocking in stage the quote-unquote ugly stage of of doing this okay for those of you who are wondering what on earth is going on right now as you can see the general fade of light to the darker mountainous color up above but this just adds to a little bit of mist and whatnot that's down in there and I'm gonna build that up a little bit that's all I'm doing build it right up just like that it appears white but it's not just like so and this time I use the glycerin on the brush itself instead of putting it on the canvas but this as you know is just 11 by um, 15 inch paper I'm just taking the paint off the brush that's all not really changing anything all right there you have it all right I'm gonna clean off the brush here I usually reach over by the camera and, and use the bigger pail to clean the stuff off but I don't necessarily have to do that when I got the small jar right here all right now that I've established pretty much more or less the um, shape of the mountain here there's those of you who are a wee bit intimidated of the um, palette knife you shouldn't be all right it's nothing to be scared of it's just you have to get accustomed to using a palette knife all right I'm gonna get a little more of the uh, sienna here I got enough blue somewhat okay we're gonna start mixing I don't need I don't need the glycerin right now so I'm gonna put the glycerin away we're gonna start doing uh, some nice highlights or whatnot some texture here for the mountain that's far away you know still keep in in in, um, in the context of I'm gonna use a small um, I prefer a palette knife like this for the type of texturing I am going to do um, with this mountain I'm gonna move the water over now what I am going to do is maintain that same type of color I'm gonna put it right here I really don't need any glycerin I'm gonna get some of the blue put the blue up right there with the brown all right which is gonna gray gray it out it doesn't look gray right now because I didn't add any white to it and that's what we're gonna do next add some titanium white to this mix now depending on how much brown that's in it depends uh, will determine how much gray all right now it still looks obviously a little bit on the blue side I just need a little bit more brown okay and we're gonna keep doing this until I get that blue gray type of, of uh, look that I'm looking for and they're starting to do it right now okay so these simple colors right now it's what's producing what you're looking at now remember keep in mind this is acrylic paint so acrylic paint dries through evaporation oil paint dries through oxidation so acrylic paint the uh, water-based paint okay now with what you see here all right this is good good color to do this with we're gonna get some of that far away texture <coughs> for this mountain all right now I can um, whiten it out and make it even more of a distant thing also but we're gonna keep it along kind of the same color I'm just tapping right now I'm doing this series of taps because what I want to get is what you see here in the camera if it light hits it right you see the little the points that are, that are coming within the edge you see that look like little stalactites or something like that that's what you're going to use for the texture of this mountain all right and you can pretty much go in whatever direction you feel now i'm going to go above and beyond for this segment because i want to show you the example okay of how you would texture the mountain um you can do this with highlights it's all all really up to you i'm just tapping in a slight drag i'm getting as close to the edge as i can and just a slight little drag of little little color here just like that that's all you do 
Um, it would take a little practicing for you to get a get a hold of it. But that's okay. I'm about to bring some of this right down. I'm going to trail it down here. Just like that. You don't want extreme detail with this. You can move around rather quickly um, with this type of texturing. Depending on how you want to go with your with your mountain. All right. These mountains are in the background, which is why the, the rock formations and rock faces are is, is close in color to the actual bulk of the mountain itself. All right. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. Be a lot of shadow on this side also. So de definitely depending on how you want to sculpt your mountain, all right? So as I'm doing it here, I'm looking and seeing which way I would like to go with this. And remember, it's just a tap. I'm using all of the, the bottom of the, of the, uh, the brush, or the uh, palette knife, not brush. And just making general mountainous shapes, okay? No more, no less. As I get into it more, I'll start to design little paths and shadows and whatnot to this guy. For right now, I'm just looking for interesting kind of rock formations and, and things like that. And you see I'm going pretty much in a general direction with it. Just like so. Remember this stuff dries darker. All right. Just keep that in mind. Might not look like much now, but keep working at it. Don't be discouraged. Okay. The more you do, the more comfortable you will get at doing them. That's a fact. Bring it down into the, the lighter areas. Okay. Don't have to add too many highlights to it. This is mainly a background thing. You'll understand in a second or two. Now what just happened there is that sometimes this is masking tape and it will peel up. Especially using the glycerin. Um, the border thing is just my choice that I like to do. But if you're going to frame them, you're not going to see most of that anyway. Alright. So, it's pretty much what you see right now. I'm just scraping it up as much as I can of the color, tapping it. As I'm looking at it, I have a monitor, so I'm looking at the painting also like in a different light, a different mind's eye. Because when I'm looking at it on the monitor, all right, I'm not really looking at it per se like I'm, uh, you're looking at it. All right, it gets a certain look, so you, you can kind of see where you want to go, where you don't want to go, where it should have went, things like that. I don't really have to highlight too much of this of this mountain. All right, just this basic rock type of pattern um, is good enough, and you'll see why in a second or two. Don't need a light or a dark to a mountain that's this far away because it's miles away which is pretty much why the color is the way it is okay I'm doing a lot of this texturing like I say it's morally more or less for you because I know where the mountain's going to be the, the previous the next mountain this is the previous mountain the next mountain is going to be larger okay so as you can see already all right with the the cloud bottom here and with some of these clouds here you can see with just this little silhouette of a mountain here um it brings the clouds back it brings this guy up front okay but because of its bluish gray nature it blends more with the background than with the um the foreground okay all right now that we've established that more or less 
And with the type of mounting mountain that I'm going to do, all right, I'm going to um, get a lot more of the phthalo blue mix in with the uh, the burnt sienna because we're going to make a very dark mountain base, almost black. All right, so let me uh, do a little something here. Starting out, this is not sienna, this is burnt umber. I thought it was sienna. No, it's too dark. This is actually uh, umber, which is in itself a good thing because it's even it's an even darker brown with more green in it okay so let's get into some of this umber here we'll put it right here and just get plenty of this phthalo blue dark blue paint it's gonna, not going to lose its intensity or anything it's more paint than glycerin i'm just loosening up the paint because i gotta I'll cover a wider area okay here we go you guys ready and we're going to start right from here right from here make it about as craggy as I can come out come down a little bit oh let's get a nice little peak right there come out down come around I'm gonna go straight down right to that fog area there keep it fairly dark something like that a little flat oh let's give it a little peak there keep that edge fairly deep and dark and we're gonna come downward just like that and we're gonna darken all of that this is gonna be fairly dark just like that keep it dark all that don't matter I'm just gonna get all the dark I can I'm gonna put it right there just like that, darken it right out. Really silhouette this thing. And all it is, basically, it's just a dark um, version of what I have in the sky and what I have in a preceding mountain. That's all we, we're dealing with right now. Block it right in. Just like so. I don't need it any darker than what you're looking at right now. Darken it right up. I can get it even deeper if I wanted to. Alright, but it just looks like a big old cliff face here. Just like this. Alright, all your detail and all the cute stuff is going to happen with this fella right here. To be honest with you. I may get this even, even darker. But we're going to wait and see. We're going to let it dry a little bit. I might go darker with this. All right. Because I kind of need it to be really, really dark. Okay. Which means I might use the rest of this blue and the rest of this brown to darken it. And so we're going to start it right here. I want it darker. Just like that. So I'm going to have to make some more of this up, probably. Getting some more, as much as I can, of it. And just darken it up a little bit. All right. I ran out of my colors, which is fine. I would rather run out and add more to it than to have too much and waste a lot of it. So as I'm making up this extremely dark color, no glycerin at all, just pure paint. I want it pretty dark. All right. And there we go, like that. Now that's dark. And it's the kind of dark I want. Now the glycerin is on here, making it as slick like you see it, which is fine. It'll all harden up as I give it time to dry. Just like that. I just want it dark, darker. And I'm not 
really concerned about it being smooth or even. All right, matter of fact, don't make it like that. There. Now, that's a lot darker. Keep the patterns, keep the streak marks if you want. It's okay. All that is gonna help you out and be beneficial to what we're doing. Cause as I was looking at it, I'm like, no, it's not dark enough. Need a little, a little deeper than that. But this type of dark is welcome. All right. There. Don't have to blend it or anything. This is what I'm looking for. That's dark. Just like that. And believe it or not, it's still in the color scheme of the whole painting. All right. Now I'm going to leave that be. I got to let that set a little bit. Because of the glycerin, I got to let it dry up a tad. And when I come back, we're going to finish her off. Starting with this blue, phthalo blue mixing with white. Added a little more of the, uh, it's actually burnt umber. It's not sienna. Uh, but I added that to the blue and white mix, which gives me this shade. And then more, it gives me that. Then much more blue and brown to give me this dark here. Okay. And we're, re we're really going to mess with the detailing here okay now I've done a certain amount of uh, certain style of detailing when I did the mountains back here which is it's got a little texture to it but it's not overly detailed because it's in the back back there okay it's not really too uh, sharp or crisp all right down below what I got left is uh, a little bit of the dark mix which is still in there it's got a little glycerin there so it's got, got a little bit of something left in there then we got titanium white here. All right, I'm just gonna get a little titanium white and I'm gonna put it in with this little bluish mix, which is gonna turn it, obviously, this grayish blue mixture. Okay, just like that. And a couple of ways I can do this mountain. I can do it this way uh, with the, as you can see, the uh, little stippling here. All right, I don't know if you guys can see that, if the shell is gonna catch it correctly or not. I can do it that way. Or I can do it the Bob Ross method and do it the, um, just, you know, do the little slide thing. <coughs> Either way will give me kind of the presentation I'm looking for. I think I wanna kind of do it, maybe the, the Bob Ross way for this style of mountain. Okay, so I'll get the rest of that paint off of this knife i'm gonna go with a smaller ross knife here this type of blade which doesn't obviously doesn't have the curve and what i'm gonna do is take this bluish white mix that i have i'm gonna take it and i'll just flatten it out like that it's a little bit marbled and that's fine okay i will take the knife go across there's a nice thin little bead of paint there now let's come up here you can see the way my hands are positioned on it. I'm not gonna hold it like this, like I'm icing a cake. All right, it'd be more like this, where you take that little thin strip of blue, okay. I'm gonna go right on along the edge here. Take a little thin strip of blue, very lightly, don't press. You take it and you just glide it across like this. Just glide it on across, just like that. Instant texture, okay. And you just keep going with it. I'm going to go around here on the edge. I'm going to bring it out towards the edge a little bit. Because I really want it on the edge. And very lightly just coat it along like so. This mountain is not entirely dry. Which is actually great. So it gives me all sorts of myriad of shapes and, and patterns. I'll have it thicker maybe on one one side here and maybe I'll bring it out and around like that all right and this is the fun part believe it or not at least for me it is I like doing things like this oh let's maybe have a little outcrop here have it come out there like that and then we'll 
flatten it out this way come on around like that almost like a little cliff there right here I'll highlight it a little more and come on around like that all right and then we'll continue onward with it like that a little outcrop there and maybe curve it around a little bit get it a little more titanium white I'll put it right in there marble it up a little bit don't totally have it one color where if the fun in that I like this little ledgy thing so let's let's do that let's continue that little ledgy deal right there and we'll bring it on down there and let it disappear by itself wiping off my little knife here and we're just gonna keep it moving come out here have it slide around a little bit like that do it a little bit at a time don't rush your work all right don't do that to yourself have fun with it I want something right down here coming right off like that and I'll take it and I'll go backwards a little bit like this add all sorts of fun little details to it you're just building it up ever so slightly okay matter of fact I like the way that looks I'm gonna continue that right from here and meet it right here it's gonna meet right in here I'm gonna keep that pocket dark all right add, add all sorts of little things to that let's do a little bit of that here come out and around I don't have enough paint let's do that one more time come out and around still not enough paint because I want to catch some highlight right there it's like that out and around like so and then I'll just take what's there and I just take it and I'll just sweep it on down Sweep it on down like that. Come on, that's like that. There. See that? Cool, right? But see how you can just keep playing around with it? Okay. I like that. I like this little ledge thing here. I want to get this ledge thing happening right here and keep it moving. I like the ledge and I'm going to continue the ledge just like that. Okay, and I'm gonna continue going straight downward there like that. So it looks like packed on snow and all of that good stuff. All right, I'm feeling all of this fun stuff. I truly am. I'm gonna go a little darker. Pick get some of this pigment here. Some of this darkness. I want it a little darker. Matter of fact, I want a little more, a little more blue in that. Because I'm going to do the shadow side. Because we're going to get a little more detailed with this, um, with this mountain here. A little more blue, just like this. Now remember, it might seem a little pastel like as of right now but it will darken as it dries we're at the 90 percent mark on this painting okay so i'm just wiping off my palette knife a nice little swipe across that's a little band of paint go in the opposite direction all right if you want to go straight down go straight down if you want to go this way then you know lower left and go lower left let's, let's flatten out the the palette knife and we're gonna just keep it moving just like that. Let's keep it like that. Let's go to the lower left with it. And a little bit here, come out, go to the lower left, curve it. Just like that. Keep it going in the opposite direction. Okay. Get a little dip there, like that. See how everything's getting built up here? All right. Keep it going, remember, in the opposite direction. Um, let's go here and we're gonna keep it aimed downward like that and we're gonna keep it going downward like so keep it going downward overlap a little bit a little bit right there I 
I want a little bit of it right up in here. I'm going to use the sh shorter edge, get into those little spots right in here. Right in there. Just like that. Just like that. All right. We're going to continue right along. I'm going to come over here to the right side, right up in here. And we're going to continue. Let's take it and we're going to trail it right on there like that. Overlap it. Okay, some of it will catch, some of it will not. Right here. Straight downward like that. Nice little curve. Don't get rid of all of your main dark. At least try not to, all right? I'm going to put a cliff right there, but it's on the shadow side, so we're going to just drag that out like that. Right to the end there. See that? Keep it a little bit mysterious. There. Bring some of that around in there like that. All right. We're gonna start highlighting now. When you start to highlight, okay, what's gonna happen is that that bright paint is gonna come off on the paint that's already placed on here. And you don't need too much highlights for this, okay? Let's get rid of this stuff here. Don't need too much of this anymore, so I'm just wiping it off my little plastic. Let's get some white here, just like that. Now, I put it right on top of the paint there. It doesn't really matter. You know, it doesn't have to be entirely super clean, okay? All right, and very lightly, we're just gonna highlight some of this paint, some of the uh, cliff face here, especially on the tip. Keep it very bright you need a difference follow me just like so I don't need too much just where the Sun might hit a little bit all right I'm just wiping off my palette nice every every pass I get it's gonna catch on the raised areas and that's all you really want to do take it curve it around a little bit Make it interesting, okay? Just like so. And I'm keeping the palette knife fairly flat against this, okay? Got a little outcrop here, so. And then we'll bring it on around. Not the most difficult thing in the world to do once you get accustomed to it. Keep it, like I say, fairly bright. like that add some little caps up on there just a few let's go all the way around just like that <coughs> you got to add the sound effects or it doesn't work just like that all right got some on the other side give a little bit a little bit of cake right there and we got our final little 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 bit right in here. Just like that. Just outline it a little bit. Get it get it as, as white as you can. I'm not really concerned about it being super bright. Just like that. Now look at what was done already. Okay, you got your shadow side, you got your lit side. Okay. Remember you got a little cliff here. The cliff is pretty much on the lit side. We're going to go that direction. Just like that. All right. Now, mountain in front, mountain a little far away, and your clouds. Okay. With the palette knife. All right. Now, I've been doing this for a while, 
and I know I'm making it look extremely simple but the technique is there okay with it's like you're steering a car go in whatever direction you really want with it so it's just getting accustomed to the pellet knife all right in doing what you want it to do okay now usually you do not work backwards I want to add a little more emphasis in between this mountain and the mountain in the back the best way to do that is to slap a little bit of fog in it all right a little bit of mist oh I guess I'll use this little guy here we're going back to the little flat brush here all right and I'm going to look down here and watch this I want to show you this this little this little tiny bit of white right there titanium white no kind of glycerin or whatnot we'll add a, a few bits of mist in here okay and basically what you do let's start off right here let's start off right here you just take it and you know you just play around in there like that just only the tip of a little bit of a uh, titanium white okay just the tip because you want it to kind of look like mist and fog or whatever in the back back there because you still want to see some of the details of of the of the, um, of the mountain when you do this so just very lightly circular motion make it look like a mist get it pretty close down here to your uh, base here to add to the add to the uh, this, the, 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 the elevation of the mountain go right into your detail you're not gonna you're not gonna totally obscure everything very 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 lightly okay that's all pat it around you got some some pockets that are hitting the sun <coughs> you got some that are not okay so if you're very unsure use the smallest amount of titanium white when doing it and all you're doing is rubbing it and fading it in there like I said, you're causing little pockets of, of mist and, and what have you. All right. And you're establishing distance between the two bodies of, of the mountains. All right. That's all you're doing. All right. Little, little tip of paint. Little tip of paint. You can have it go pretty high, too. Put it right up in there. Wear it away. Wear it down. Don't worry, as it dries, you still see some of the detail of the other, other part of the mountain. Worry not, it will happen. Trust me. Come on down here, just like this. Just like that. Pat it in there and keep it moving. All right. Smallest amount of, 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 of uh, paint is what you need. Okay. I don't have to cover everything either. There. Just misting it out here and there. Don't worry. When it dries, that some of that dark from the preceding mountain will show through. Trust me when I say this. All right. Yes, I'm obscuring some of the mountain top itself. Some of the tops of the mountain, you can obscure some of that. Add to the fading, fading this to it if that's a word just pat in a few just like that all right it is okay don't panic but look at that all right so we're just about we're just about through here I got a little bit of a black mark in here get rid of that make it disappear real quick just put a make shift cloud up in there like that all right i really don't think anything else needs to be added with this i'll put a little atmosphere right here because my my little rock's a little jagged and i don't like the way it looks so i'll put a little little mist right in there hide that you can do that creative liberty you can do it they'll never know the difference okay all right as it's dry you're gonna see all sorts of details and stuff hanging around in there Okay, and you see that 
even though it is a little mist clouds or what you want to call it you notice it's not definitely not white you can see the brown all in it and everything it adds to it it adds to it whoa watch my head watch my head i forgot i got a, a water tray right here okay i'm gonna sign my name to this take the sh the take the uh, tape off and we're gonna call this kind of done get this um what's this little guy doing in there for what are you doing in there get out of there oh uh, they thought oh, i'll play around with this little fella here i'll mess around with some of this white here this is not a script. It's, it's a it's a it's a it's a liner brush, but it's not a script liner. So, a little thicker. All right, I'll pop my name. Usually, I put it in the corner. I think I might be able to get away with it here. I think so. I think I'm able to do it. Thank you guys for watching this. I didn't say this in the other one, but I appreciate you watching it, taking the time to watch. <coughs> if you feel to want to need to donate my PayPal link it will be on the bottom description and um it's also on the lower left hand, lower right hand corner of my banner so any little bit would help I would greatly appreciate it if you're inclined to do so so I can continue to bring these um tutorials to you if they help you out uh, let me know good bad or indifferent um, your input is valued trust me it is I don't ignore now as I peel the tape away glycerin does do this as you can see maybe you can't but it's heavy bleed through which is fine like I say if you put this on a frame you'll never you're gonna never notice it anyway but this is the mountain part of the uh, tutorial that I wanted to do. Yep, glycerin does seep through. But it helps the paint seep through anyway. There we go. All right. And there you have it. Mountain painting. Um, just wanted to show you what you can do, what can be done and all of that good stuff. It's only using the three colors. Um, it's actually burnt umber, so I have to correct that. It's bar burnt umber, phthalo blue, and titanium white, and this is what you have. You got depth, distance within the mountains, within the clouds themselves, um, but I already showed you with the cloud example. Um, I mean, if you're so inclined, you pop a bird in there somewhere, eagle, eagle soaring or whatever, you know all sorts of stuff you can you can pretty much um, add in here if you're inclined to do so um, let's see here before I sign off let's get a little bit of uh, let's get a little bit of this dark color here see if I, if I can get a little bit of it I'll throw something in there um, if you don't want to go extremely detailed with the eagle that's fine um, but I'm sure you can pop a little something like right here in this corner here, like this. Even though he's far away, give this guy a nice wingspan there. Make him look like a very large bird. Let's get a little bit of white on the tip of the brush and pop a head right in there like that. And you got, a, you got an eagle flying around out there. You might even have two. Who knows? Um, why not? Let's get some more of this dark. We'll have one. We'll have one sneaking around right here, right on the bottom, right here. He's a little closer, so he's got more of a wingspan here. This guy, just like that. He's a. He's looking for a goat or something. He's a mutated one. He's a big one. down there so if I actually zoomed in you would you would see the two down in there all right they're swooping in for the kill they see something delicious but all right guys 
if I turned off the lights, you would see the details and everything going on within the picture there. But thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Let me know what you think, good, bad, or indifferent. And um, I'll see you when I see you. Peace out. God bless.